Hello, this is Dr. Bob DiMaria, the drugless doctor, and today we're going to talk about GMOs. You say, what is a GMO? Genetically modified organism. Probably one of the most misunderstood challenges of the new millennium. It's actually quite frightening, and I, I feel like I'm talking to you about a movie script, and we're literally living it. Genetically modified organisms really started in the early 1990s in the United States. I'll make this statement. The European Union does not allow genetically modified food. If they don't allow genetically modified food to enter their union, why are we in the United States having so much genetically modified foodstuffs? So the real current word I like to use is genetically engineered food. And it is literally almost everywhere today. Wow. If you eat any kind of processed food to die, chances are it has genetically engineered corn in it. I can tell you right now, more than likely, high fructose corn syrup that's used to sweeten so many of the items today comes from genetically engineered corn. Regardless of what they say, the big organizations, genetically engineered corn is not compatible with human cellular function. I know from experience that trans fatty acid is the perfect example. Trans fatty acid or partially hydrogenated oils is an altered cell structure to fat molecules. And I've seen it from my over 30 years of experience, one of the leading causes of emotional distress. So I also know that when you put genetically engineered food in someone's body and they have commonly chronic allergies, pain syndromes, bizarre health conditions including um, MS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and any other condition, we always go back and trace to see what that person was eating. Genetically engineered soy and wheat are also major problems in our society today. Do you realize that nearly 8 billion, ready for this, 8 billion pounds of soy is created in the United States alone. And that was from statistics or two or three years ago. Five billion is used in the restaurant industry alone. Soy has permeated nearly every fabric of our food chain. Corn and wheat are common allergens. So I see chronic allergies in my practice for people who eat what we call standard or conventional food. What does that mean? This is important. When you go to a grocery store, I want you to become label savvy. According to the USD organic rule, genetically modified food cannot be considered organic. Look at the fruits and vegetables. The number nine by the PLU number is significant because that means that that item should be organic. Number eight, I'll say this again, eight is considered from a genetically engineered source. All other numbers are considered standard. You want to put as much organic that you possibly can. Recently, I read in one of the major newspapers in the United States, business newspaper, that some manufacturers were calling their food all natural, but they were using genetically altered oils as a part of the ingredients. All natural does not include genetically engineered food. What's really interesting also is the fact that there are herbicides and pesticides that they spray on these plants to help keep the bugs off, where in fact, Mother Nature is trying to protect us by killing these plants before it goes inside of our bodies. And I also know from my experience that we've seen an increased number of challenges, including pain syndromes, chronic allergies, and bizarre health challenges in patients who are consuming genetically engineered food. And there are animals that they have done research on that are dying and having altered body functions because of genetically engineered foods. And there's reported of species of fish that have been altered. How do they make these genetically engineered foods anyways? Well, they use organisms from one animal to another and they cross-pollinate and they put actual cells inside of these structures. And see, it's even a biblical principle, and it's in the book of Genesis, that you should eat food from seed-bearing plants. 
And the largest company that created all of these genetic engineered foods, what happens is, is their seeds self-destruct. You say, what does that mean, Dr. Bob? That means that the companies that make the genetically engineered seeds, every year the farmers have to come back and they have to buy seeds again because the plants do not replicate themselves. And there's various areas in the world where farmers have literally committed suicide because of the economic loss by incorporating genetically engineered foods and these sprays and these seeds. I mentioned to you that nearly 80 to 85 and up to 90 percent of our food chain today has been infiltrated with genetically engineered food and they hide, they, they actually literally hide the ingredients but I can tell you items like multidextrin and texturized proteins possibly could be coming from a genetically engineered source. So if you see any kind of fruit like even a grapple which is a combination of a grape and an apple or if they suggest that you can have genetically modified plants and they're exactly the same for you and you have a child that has chronic allergies and they have other dysfunction problems including ADD and emotional distress I'm just going to ask you for a month or two or three if you even need to adjust your budget accordingly get them off of all genetically modified or genetically engineered food Gluten in wheat is very large today in genetically engineered wheat seeds and could be one of the reasons that we're starting to see so many problems with celiac disease and other digestive distress. So, if you have any kind of major health problem that you've never had before and you've noticed you're eating more processed or boxed food now, I'm going to ask you passionately, change what you're doing, write letters to your senator and congressman, this has to stop. I promise you, the world will be glad you did.